So remember how a couple months back I told you guys all my plans for building out the film set that I was going to decorate it and it was going to be all sweet. We're going to have a battle station in this corner. Well, if you look behind me, none of that has gotten done, as you can see, because I've been inundated with back to back product launches. They've been huge launches that I can't ignore. So it's been eating up all my time and delaying all my plans for the film studio. On the plus side, we've already received some of the hardware for the gaming setup, including these three beautiful displays from LG, as well as a couple RTX 30. 90s from MSI. So even though we can't actually start building anything out today because I'm still waiting on other items to roll in, it doesn't mean we can't take some of this stuff for a spin. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're just going to be playing around with our hardware. I should probably rephrase that. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun though. We've got these three Ultra Gear 27 GN 950 displays from LG. They are brand spanking new and allegedly the world's first 4K 144 hertz one millisecond displays. They feature G-Sync and they have HDR 600. Did I mention there's three of them? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited. So we're gonna have a pretty sweet triple panel display here. And I was gonna put an LG TV, an OLED TV right above, but I decided against that. I, I put that TV in the bathroom instead for some reason. And instead of a, a TV, I'm actually gonna put a wall mounted system. It's gonna be insane, hopefully, when all is said and done. Inside of that system will be at least one RTX 3090. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put two, I, I don't know. 3090s are so hard to come by, like everything else right now, that uh, I don't know if I can actually spare two for a build for just whatever small uplift that'll that'll actually give me. Uh, but we do have two of them right now. We've got uh, two MSI Supreme X RTX 3090s right here. And I would have loved to test both of them today in SLI, but I don't have an NVLink bridge that supports RTX 3000 GPUs. So we're only gonna be able to use one RTX 3090 today. Boo hoo, you should all feel very sorry for me. I'm joking. The rest of the system that we're gonna be using today features a Ryzen 9 5950X, uh, which is also the CPU that I plan to use for the wall mounted build. And then that's being cooled by a Be Quiet Pure Loop AIO 280 millimeter uh, radiator there on top of an Aorus X570 master motherboard with th 32 gigs of G Skill Trident Z DDR4 at 3600 speed. All right, so um, that's, that's kind of what we're doing. We're just gonna be uh, messing around, seeing how the RTX 3090 actually handles these three displays gaming simultaneously simultaneously on these panels should be pretty interesting. It's gonna be really demanding because what, one 4K display is roughly 8.2, 8.3 million pixels, I think. So yeah, we're talking about 25, roughly 25 million pixels that this single card is gonna to have to render. Um, should be interesting. It's also worth noting that once this is all set up, I'm not gonna be gaming on all three displays simultaneously. I'm gonna be gaming on the middle display and I'm gonna be using the side uh, the side displays for things like Twitch chat, Discord, because this is mainly gonna be for streaming. Probably will do some actual triple panel action once in a while when I'm just gaming, you know, leisurely and I'm offline and stuff, but that rarely happens these days because I just don't have much time. But uh, I'm getting off topic here. Let's go ahead and set this up and we'll take it from there. Before we continue, this video is sponsored by the PowerColor RX 6800 XT Red Devil. Featuring a custom 14 plus two phase VRM with Dr. Moss and high polymer caps, experience maximum reliability and overclocking potential with this thoughtfully engineered GPU. The triple fan design and massive heatsink offer a cool and quiet experience that top the charts in our testing, and the unique RGB implementation gives the card an aggressive aesthetic that complements its high-end performance. To learn more about the PowerColor RX 6800XT Red Devil, click on the link below. All right, the monitors are all set up and don't they look glorious? Yeah, it was super easy to set up, more on that later. But a um, couple things about the panels themselves, very thin bezels, which I absolutely love. So even when they're side by side, if I were to be gaming on all three at once, there's minimal distraction in between. You can still focus on the game uh, and the environment and stuff. That being said, of course, ultra wides are unbeatable in that sense of immersion, right? Because there's no bezel whatsoever. It kind of envelops your vision. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably gonna wonder or ask me in the comments, why I didn't opt for an ultra wide setup instead of this? Uh, and that's a, that's a fair question, very valid point, especially because I generally prefer gaming on ultra wides when I'm not streaming. If it's just like I'm playing alone, not talking to anyone or, you know, people in Discord and stuff, but if, if I'm not streaming, then having an ultra wide is my personal preference. But since this is a streaming setup primarily, this is my preferred setup and I'll tell you why. I've tried streaming with a single ultra wide panel in the past and I did not like it because I had to run the game in windowed mode so I could fit like 
Discord and chat, you know, within the margins, like on the edges of the screen, which is horrible. There's not much room in those, those edges anyway. Uh, and secondly, running your game in windowed mode doesn't always give you the full performance. I've benchmarked enough games over the years to know that it's, it's really not ideal unless you absolutely have to run it in windowed mode. Now, of course, I could add a second panel or even a third panel to an ultra wide setup for streaming. If I wanted to put, you know, a panel on either side for all of those various applications, I could do that. But then I'd be craning my neck more than I generally like to. It really kind of pains my neck. I could put a monitor above, but I also don't, this is a weird personal preference. I don't like looking up. I just, when I'm talking about, like talking about screens and stuff, if, if someone like points out a cool bird in the sky, I'm not gonna be like, no, I don't, uh, I don't look up. Uh, no, it's not like that. It's just when I'm at my desk or I'm at a setup like this, I generally don't feel, it doesn't feel natural to me to look up at a screen. I, I much more prefer looking left and right. And I think that's just how a lot of people are because just, you know, when you're walking around everyday life, you're usually looking left and right, not so much up and down. Of course that happens once in a while, but for me, um, I just don't like the, the vertical display thing. And you're like, I'm sure you guys are like, well, you were planning to put an LG OLED up there, like a giant TV up there. So what are you, are you uh, contradicting yourself a bit? Well, that was primarily for games. It wasn't for like my streaming companion screen or anything. It was actually for if I were to have people over and we were doing like a local co-op game and we wanted like a, a larger format display uh, so that we could all see it and, and sit around it comfortably. That's what that monitor was gonna be for or that TV was gonna be for. Um, so that's, that's a little bit different. We'd be sitting a lot further back, I would imagine. And yeah, it's just kind of different. So this setup for me personally works out great uh, for, for streaming. I hope that clears up some things. Now let's talk about the monitors a little bit more. Uh, for starters, they were very easy to set up. I mean, LG has completely mastered how to set up a monitor and just making it completely streamlined. Basically, there's a stand with two pieces, the base, which screws into this the spine part of the stand with two thumb screws. They're captive thumb screws, so they're already in place. They don't fall out and they're thumb screws, so you don't, it's completely toolless. This connects to the actual panel, uh, also in a toolless fashion, just kind of snaps in, just clicks and there's a latch automatically. I mean, you set this panel up in literally 20, 30 seconds and you're done. So very simple there, super intuitive. You have this RGB ring around. Uh, you can do static color if you want. I think there's like an LG Ultra Gear app you can download. You can customize it, make it uh, reactive lighting so that it you know, corresponds with what's on screen. But uh, it looks looks pretty cool, especially when you've got all three going there. Let's, you know what, let's actually turn light off here because it's kind of hard to see just how beautiful they glow at night. Da, 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 da. Okay, you get the idea, but pretty sexy. And as good as these monitors look right now, I cannot wait to get them on the wall. Oh my gosh, it's gonna look super clean, especially with the system that's gonna be up there, which is gonna be inside of a Thermaltake P5 Black Edition. Perfect case for wall mounting and stuff. So anyway, I'm getting off topic again. Um, let's talk about, really quick, the OSD is super simple and easy to use. There's a joystick, you know, the little joystick that LG's done for a while now on a lot of their displays. Um, so there's a joystick and you can go right. This is kind of like the main menu here. And I like that it shows you at a glance that you're running at 144 Hertz. You've got adaptive sync on all the basics and stuff. There's also a scroll wheel right here. And when you start, when you click it in, it actually clicks in as well. It opens up the lighting menu for the, uh, the back panel, the back side of the panel that we just saw. So it was on dynamic previously, which is like the RGB rainbow effect. You've got some static presets here and yeah. It's also worth noting that even though I'm gonna be wall mounting these suckers, the stands that they come with are really solid. You know, circling back to the stand just for a minute, um, the, uh, the spine itself is like a plastic material. There's also like a cable routing, cable managing uh, hook there. Uh, but then the base is metallic and it doesn't really wobble all that much. So even if you don't have like a super sturdy desk and maybe your desk wobbles from time to time, the monitor is actually not gonna shake too much. It's pretty solid. And it also features height adjustment, tilt, and pivot, it pivots uh, 90 degrees and stuff, but it does not feature swivel, so bear that in mind. You may have also noticed that I had MSI Afterburner up here. That's because I've already overclocked our RTX 3090 Supreme X. And here's just a quick look at the settings that I used. Obviously maxed out the power and temp limit sliders. We have a core clock offset of 120 megahertz and 600 megahertz on the memory clock offset. I set the fan speed to 70, just to fix 70%. Um, it doesn't really need that. It's only getting up to maybe 65C uh, in the various applications that I briefly tested. Um, and it's still pretty quiet. I mean, it's audible and stuff, but once it's inside of a case, 
it uh, it's it's not going to pose too many issues even at 70 percent so uh, solid card i already reviewed the msi rtx 3080 supreme x you can go ahead and check out that review same exact cooler just a different different gpu uh, obviously but um why don't we go ahead and try gaming on this bad boy eh let's uh let's start with uh, just some simple 4k uh, a simple 4k run and then we'll scale up to using all three panels at once all right, jumping into our first game here. This is Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, brand new game. Oh, that I'm obviously really good at. Playing at 4K right now, or 3840 by 2160. Let me just show you really quick here. Um, so we do have it uh, set to 144 hertz on our refresh rate for the monitor. And VSync is disabled, of course. 3840 by 2160, and pretty much maxed out settings all the way down. Um, everything is as high as it can go. NVIDIA DLSS is set to performance right now. Could go quality, but I think performance is a nice happy medium. We are good to go. Let me go ahead and apply that. And we are hovering around, well, well over 100 FPS. Sometimes it gets close to, to dipping below 100, but so far it looks like it's uh, just north of 100 frames per second at 4K, guys, not too bad. And 76C is where we're at right now on the GPU temp. And I could crank up the fan speed a little bit more because it is, I think it's only at, let me double check. I think it's just on auto. Yeah, it's on auto. It's only at 43% fan speed. It's very quiet still. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna crank it up a little bit. Let's see what happens at 60% fan speed. Got a little louder, but honestly, not enough to really notice if it's inside of a case. It's still very quiet. And it looks like our GPU temp went down to 70C. We're at 69, so we're still descending. If you wanna do, you know, 144 hertz at 4K, it is now possible with the GPU like an RTX 3090, which means it's also probably possible with a 3080, because to be honest, the 3090 isn't that much faster in gaming than the 3080. Um, maybe by about 10, 15%, as we've seen in countless reviews. It really is tailored for the workstation crowd, but it makes a hell of a gaming GPU as well. Oh, we're at 65C now, hovering between 64 and 65 degrees Celsius. That's pretty awesome. On an RTX 3090 that's overclocked. Our GPU core frequency just jumped up to 2100 megahertz. I'm not exactly sure how long it's been there, but looks like we got a little bit of a bump from when we uh, first started. I would totally, totally smoke these guys if I... If I had sound. That's the only thing keeping me from sucking right now. All right, well, I just killed that guy and I'm, I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead. So why don't we back out and we'll try, I have to enable the uh, vision surround or whatever in the NVIDIA control panel um, for us to do a uh, triple panel display. So be right back. Okay, we've got surround enabled. So if we go back into our settings here, we should see an option to stretch our resolution. I shouldn't say stretch, but change the resolution to a whopping 11,520 by 2160. There's a whole other whole other digit in there that wasn't there before. Let's go ahead and apply, see if it works. The monitor's lit up, the backside of the monitor. They're like, this is serious. It's because we're actually tapping into them now. Whoa, what's happening? Oh no, it didn't work. Did it not work? Hold on, give me a sec. What? Multi-monitor, here, okay. I had to change it to multi-monitor, I think. What does it say, press alternator time, okay. Let's try it now. Oh! <gasps> Oh shit. Holy bajabas. It's been so long since I've gamed on a setup like this. And hold on, actually, this isn't right because the third monitor is still black. I just realized I was so overwhelmed by what was going on over here. I didn't, what's going on here? How do I stretch you all the way? So she said, no, that's not, hold on. Yeah, I was like, no way we're getting 60 FPS. It'd be way less than that. Okay, we're back. And as you can see, after much troubleshooting, I did not fix the issue. I, I don't know what's going on. Um, there's a number of things that could be causing it. For one, we know it's not the monitor itself. The monitor is totally fine. Um, if it was a connection issue or if the monitor just wasn't responding, then we wouldn't see this bleed over. Like you can actually see that some of the pixels are, are actively showing the image. So it's not the monitor's fault, but um, it could be a driver issue. This is a brand new game, so maybe there's some, some bugs that need to be ironed out with a, a future patch or driver update. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I even lowered the uh, refresh rate to 60 hertz because I was wondering, well, maybe if it's a, if it's a bandwidth limitation over DisplayPort 1.4a, I mean, these are 4K monitors after all, but this is at 60 hertz right now. All three displays are at 60 hertz, and as you can see, the issue is still exactly the same. So unfortunately, at least in this game, I cannot show you what it's like to game on all three panels at once. I take that back. 
I can. I just can't do it at 11,520 by 2160. But if we go to 5760 by 1080, yeah, it's not nearly as exciting. You're, you're losing quite a bit of uh, resolution there, but at least it, ah, no, wait, give it a sec. <laughs> Come on, there we go. At least it'll fill up all three panels like that. So you can see you've got the full experience now. It just doesn't look nearly as crispy, um, but our frame rate's gone way up. We were, we were hovering in the 40s, I think, which is hardly playable or hardly ideal. Uh, and now we're well above 60, getting around anywhere from 90 to 100 FPS, which is super solid. I would much rather play like this than at 45 FPS at 4K on two and a half screens. Now let's go ahead and switch gears to a different game here. I don't think I can really show you guys much more than what I already have. All right, we're in Dirt 5. We're trying it out in Dirt 5, which seems way more promising right off the bat because it's already working. Before I even started messing around with settings, it just, automatically launched like this. So that's that's good news. Um, and it looks like we are at 11,520 by 2160. So 4K on all displays. Uh, we are still at 60 Hertz, but I'm gonna leave it there for now because we will probably not get above 60 FPS anyway um, at this resolution, especially at ultra high settings across the board, but we'll just see how it goes. Can't even see what's, <laughs> what's the key to confirm space, okay. Sorry, it's way in the corner of that right panel. Uh, yes, 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 everything's great. 712 FPS in the menu. Okay, here we go. We're gaming on all three at a whopping 30 FPS. Hey, look at that, 35 FPS, okay? Every frame counts at this point. And we're operating at around 1900, around 1900 megahertz ballpark on the GPU core frequency. Yeah, this isn't exactly preferred in terms of smoothness or perceived smoothness. Uh, the frame rate's a little bit lower than you'd like it to be, but this is just a quick little demo of what the RTX 3090 can handle when pitted against three 4K monitors. I think I saw an option in here to actually bring this down to 7680 by 1440, which is the triple 2K display option. I did see an option for 7680 by 1440, which is effectively three 2560 by 1440 panels uh, together. So that's, let's just try that. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Cause Modern Warfare or Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War did not have the option for this resolution. It went straight from triple 4K to triple 1080 monitors. And I was like, well, where's the 1440 option? Cause that would have been a nice, that could have been a nice sweet spot, but uh, it, it was not popping up there. So I'm glad that this game has it. Now we're gaming on triple, effectively gaming on triple 2K displays, or 2.5K, I suppose, be more, to be more accurate. Okay, this definitely still looks pretty good. It still looks pretty crispy. Obviously you can tell there's a little bit of graphical fidelity lost uh, coming down from 4K, but our frame rate's much more playable, much, much more playable. Not quite the 60 FPS average I hoped for, but I'll take 50s. I'll definitely take 50s, especially for a racing game. This is, this is more than enough for me. I think triple panel displays make a really good case for racing games in particular. I don't really like triple panel setups for, for shooters. Um, in fact, I find them kind of distracting just because there's, there's too much information. And I, I constantly find myself just veering my head back and forth and sometimes not really focusing on straight ahead or what's in front of me. For something like this, it is, it is a lot more immersive. I feel like for platformers or something, um, you know, if it's, if it's a third person shooter or a third person uh, adventure game or something like that, then, uh, then this setup can work pretty nicely too. But for FPS, it's, it's not my go-to personally. Okay, I play seventh because I'm horrible and I was talking to you guys, totally distracting me. Um, but uh, let's try a different game. All right, we're in Far Cry 5 and this is what our settings look like. There's an option that actually says Ifinity slash surround. So that's, that's the one we want because we are in surround mode. And uh, resolution pops up right here, 11,520 by 2160 with a refresh rate of 60. We're gonna start with 60 Hertz right now because that's what the monitors are currently at. And then we'll, we, we may potentially work our way up from there if, if things look good, if this actually works. Let's just jump in. Ha ha, ho, hey, look at that. Oh, triple 4K and 4 cry 5, getting 45 FPS, oh boy, that's right. Oh, neither is getting run over by a car. Hey, at least it works. Call of Duty, looking at you. Yeah, it was definitely uh, it was definitely just something wrong with the game. Probably needs a driver update or something. 
because so far Dirt 5 and Far Cry 5 have been working just swell. Let's turn the graphics settings down here. Like there's almost no point in bumping up the refresh rate. I'm not gonna change the refresh rate of the panels because we can't really get that much higher FPS anyway. Um, but if we lower our quality settings a little bit, maybe we can at least get, we can average 60 FPS. That would be nice. Let's do, let's just see where high gets us. Uh, closer. We're kind of like in the 50s more so now than the 40s. So maybe if we were to go normal, and the game still looks really good at high. Let's try going to normal. All right, we're at normal quality now, and things haven't really changed much on the performance front, but, wait, hold on, let me try killing these guys first. Oh, yeah, you didn't get me that time, sucker. The game looks not quite as nice. It, it looks normal. It's not quite as crispy as it was, and the performance benefit is pretty negligible, so I would just, keep it on high personally. But uh, this does show that the RTX 3090 can sort of handle this game, triple 4K. You just kind of have to tweak it a little bit. We're still not quite there yet. I would say with the next generation that Nvidia comes out with, we will be ready for more triple 4K action. And obviously this is a very demanding game. Is that a tiger or a cat? Oh, that's a mountain lion. What? Hey, kitty, kitty, kitty. So yeah, I think with the next generation, we're gonna start to see a lot more capability at this resolution, at this ridiculous resolution. I'm not disappointed at all that this card can't run what we're trying to do right now because this is, um, this is absolutely insane. Die, you big ol'. Hey, what you got in that tank, buddy? Okay, we are now in Wolfenstein Youngblood and it does support the 11520 by 2160 resolution. We're at the high quality preset and we do have ray traced shadows enabled, uh, and that's along with DLSS being on in uber performance mode because we need all the performance and all the help we can get in boosting our frame rate. On that note, let's go ahead and resume here and see what kind of performance we're getting. I've also gone ahead and changed the refresh rate to 144 hertz again because uh, because look at that frame rate. We're we're almost we're almost getting there. Definitely a lot closer than we were in Dirt 5 or even in uh, uh, Cold War, uh, despite not being able to utilize all three screens. 116 FPS as I look at the floor and nothing's happening. Uh, why don't I actually jump into some combat here? So yeah, I mean, it's still around 100 FPS and my God, does this feel good. I mean, these monitors, I haven't really said much about the monitors. <laughs> I should probably talk a little bit more about the monitors like I said I would. Um, these are some of the best gaming monitors on the market right now. I mean, hands down, absolutely hands down, especially if you're actually utilizing them to their fullest. 144 Hertz or, or close to it at 4K, one millisecond response time. These things are ridiculously quick, ridiculously quick. Do I have grenades? Oh, no, I don't, if I do, I don't know how to use them. Oh, I've been downed. The monitors themselves are great. The color space on these panels is also really good. DCI-P3 at 98%. That's uh, that's film grade color space for digital cinema. So the color is super nice. I have died, which is not nice. Overall, just a, a really awesome experience. And if you can get three of them side by side like this, you're living the good life. I should also mention I've got G-Sync enabled, so there's no tearing whatsoever. This really is kind of the best gaming experience you can get right now here in 2020. You know, I'm glad that by the end of this video, I was able to show you guys at least one game title that runs triple 4K with the RTX 3090 really smoothly. Didn't necessarily think it was gonna be Wolfenstein Youngblood, but uh, the, the DLSS from Nvidia definitely helps here and the experience is pretty phenomenal. Okay, so closing things out here with one last mini demo of a game that really warrants a triple 4K 144 Hertz setup. Yeah, not, not sus at all. Uh, but anyway, this was a fun little demo. Even though I'm not gonna be gaming on all three panels at the same time very often, it's gonna be very rare where I'm actually doing what I did today. It is kinda nice to see what the RTX 3090 can handle, and it's a good reminder of just how crushing triple 4K is, even for the fastest consumer grade gaming graphics card in the world right now. Um, that being said, even though it's completely overkill for gaming in that in that fashion, I kind of like the fact that uh, that I'm I'm ready for the day when we actually have a single graphics card that can drive this many pixels at high refresh rates. So um, yeah, that's kind of one of the reasons why I'm so excited about this setup is because I'm going to be able to use these panels for a long time. They're not super cheap. They're what 7.99 I think at the time of filming. 800 bucks a pop. Uh, it's definitely not 
budget by any stretch, but panel technology like this is going to last you a really long time. So I'm pretty excited to not have to swap these out um, for, for many, many years. I'm even more excited to get these panels mounted to the wall and start building out the rest of this film set. And that scared the crap out of me for a second. Oh my God, why is it broken? I honestly thought something terrible had happened. It's just, it's just the game. Okay, anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for when we actually start building out the film set. It's gonna be awesome. I know it keeps getting delayed, I'm sorry, but it is coming. So thank you for your patience and your support while I get my sh together. Uh, if you like this video, toss a like on it before you head out, get subscribed for more tech content on the way, and I will see you guys in the next video.